Hey guys, John Jr. here, I'm bringing you guys another BBR video, this time the team builder for the final week of the regular season of the BBR versus Joey Poke game. If you guys are here from Joey, I might as well let you in on a little secret. Only 20% of my viewers are subscribed, and if you want to help that number grow, help the subscribed, beat the non-subscribed, you might as well go ahead and drop a subscription down below. I'm making draft league content, hopefully until I don't like it anymore. So we'll see how far that takes me. If you enjoy BBR, there's no reason why you won't enjoy my channel. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Today we are playing Joey in a match that doesn't necessarily matter for anything except my ego. Well, I guess tomorrow, not today. Today we're preparing for the match that doesn't really matter tomorrow. And because of that, I do just wanna lay it all out. I don't think Joey wants to win this game. I really don't. I think he's actually gonna actively try to throw this game because if he wins, there's a pretty high likelihood that him and Aim will play round one in playoffs and he has told me that he does not want that or he said that in his video so i would say the odds that joey brings his best team from this matchup are very slim i don't necessarily know that he's gonna throw the match because i don't think that's who joey is but i don't think he's gonna try as hard as he could that being said we're doing somewhat of the same because not because of the amo thing i would actually like to play amo round one because i think we have a pretty good matchup but we are bringing a team that is probably not the best team that we could bring it's a fun team and hopefully a team that could wow people if it does well but i don't want to reveal my my entire hand because it's very likely that Joey and I potentially play in playoffs. The playoff race is super, super up in the air right now and anybody can play anybody. So I didn't want to bring the absolute best stuff, but I did still bring some things that I think are necessary and some things that I think could win the game. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about Joey's team. I'm actually glad we're facing Joey for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, reason number one, he's Joey Poke Game. I've been watching him since early Sun and Moon, I think. So I've been watching him, been a fan of his for quite a while. Obviously, it's surreal to get to play him, but also, because I want to talk about his team. His team consists of Palafin, Iron Treads, Aspathra, Meowscarada, Sylveon, Tauros, Paldea, Blaze, Dragolgi, Miss Magius, Ditto, Halucha, and Knacklestack. And his Terra Pokemon is going to be Terra Fighting and Terra Psychic on Aspathra. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about is everybody talks about how broken Joey's team is. And don't get me wrong, Joey's team is fantastic. His team for a draft league team, obviously, he knows what he's doing. But I've seen a lot of comments talking about how his team is just unfair compared to the rest because he has two Ubers. And I just want to touch on this a little bit here in the beginning. Ubers and Smogon are very different than Pokemon that should typically be banned in draft league. Certain Pokemon are a whole lot easier when you have a setting where you can prep things for them and something like palafin can really mold the meta in ou where you have to have something like a toxapex on your team whereas in draft there's a lot of pokemon that you might have on your draft maybe you have a slow bro a slow king all these different pokemon that are not running around in ou you have them at your disposal you have different ways to check these pokemon the same with a spot throw like a spot throw is good but especially in a format where it can only tear it into two types it's very limited and still very usable but just not as good as an uber pokemon so to those people asking me do i think a spot throw was underpriced I do think it was a little bit underpriced, but I don't see any reason why it or Palafin should be banned. Now, Terra on Palafin, that's a different story. Maybe we should ban Terra on Palafin next season, but that's a discussion for a different day. I just wanted to give a little quick insight on what I think the difference between Ubers and top tier threats in Draft League are. And, and Palafin is still a top tier threat in Draft League, and you're going to see that today. But Joey's team overall, I think he has... <sighs> I don't want to say his matchup honest because I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that this matchup is pretty even, to be honest. I think his top tier threats we have checks for, but also a spot throw at Iron Treads, they can get out of hand very, very quickly. As far as the Pokemon that I think Joey's going to bring, I think the top four Pokemon come every single time. And I think a spot throw, you look at the matchup, it has to be terrifying where it just doesn't break through Wu Qian. So I think those four are pretty no brainer. As for the sets, it's very up in the air. I think he could be just a Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, Volt Switch, Earthquake, Iron Treads. Uh, he could be potentially a bulk up three attack Palafin because I think he needs some sort of status move for our potential Sucker Punch Chi and Pao. I think he's probably calling mine three attack a spot throw. I think that's probably what does best in the matchup with Lumina Crash or Stored Power, whichever one he prefers in this situation. Uh, Shadow Ball and Terra Blast. Terra Blast fighting for the Wojian as well as the potential Chi and Pao. And then Meowth Skirata. This is probably the best Meowth Skirata matchup he's seen all season. Our grass resist is Wojian. Wojian, as much as I love him, does not resist U-turn. And Meowth Skirata just sends us packing with a U-turn, especially if he is protein and that's going to be no good. As far as what Meowth Skirata could be, I really think Ban 
Bandit comes, but I also could see a Sash lead with, you know, Spikes and Flower Trick knockoff, U-Turn, things like that. I think the last two slots are between like Sylveon, Tauros, Ditto, and Halucha. And even Nako Stack, if he just wants to have it come to a game, because I don't think it's it's came to a game yet, as far as I'm aware. But in my opinion, the last two slots will be Tauros and Ditto Tauros, because he just simply doesn't have a GM power resist. I think if Tauros does come, it has to be Piapa Berry. And Ditto, because I have a lot of Pokemon that he can take advantage of if he turns into them. But Halucha definitely has some usability. It's just like I have a GM power, so how much usability does it really have? And then Sylveon definitely has some usability. He could just be a biz death Sylveon and not worry about the Tauros Paldea Blaze. So as far as the Pokemon we're bringing, I actually had this first set, the idea for this a long time ago, uh, way back when the BBR season first started, I had the idea for this really cool Chi Impow. I wanted to bring something really cool to try to be Joey that would hopefully bring some potential viewers over here so we can grow this community. And what I thought of was a Swords Dance, Acrobatics, Sucker Punch, Throat Trap, Throat Trap, Throat Chop, Adrenaline Orb, GM Pow. So the functionality of this Pokemon, essentially, it's pretty in depth. You look at his team, what is his answer to this Pokemon? It is Tauros Paldea Blaze every single time. It's that or it's Sylveon. Sylveon, we can throw chop and then Moonblast won't do as much as Hyper Voice to us. It will still kill us, unfortunately. So we are going to kind of have to figure out what he's got there, if he expects the throw chop or not, which Joey is a fantastic player. I'm sure he does. But acrobatics, we can Swords Dance as he switches into the Tauros Paldea Blaze. We lose one of the boosts from the Swords Dance, but we're still plus one, plus one. We essentially got a Dragon Dance off, and then this Pokemon is very hard to stop. A Spothra cannot come in and beat us. And a plus one, if he's not a defensive Iron Trench, we actually Oko almost everything on his team. The only things that's stopping me from leading this Pokemon and winning the game, one, if he doesn't bring Tauros Paldea Blaze, this Pokemon very obviously does not win the game. We don't have a way to proc our Adrenaline Orb and we're just going to kind of use it as a breaker. Two, if he brings Sylveon in any capacity, we cannot lead this Pokemon ever. We cannot try to win off lead. We have to try to beat down that Sylveon. Other than that, it is a very high likelihood that we are able to lead this Pokemon and potentially try to win the game. That was my whole mindset. But again, if he leads uh, Meowskarada, there's a little bit of an iffy situation there because he could 100% just be Scarf or he could just not fear me killing him in one because he could be Sash and he could kill me in return. So it's a little bit iffy on that. And if he just doesn't bring Tauros Paldea Blaze, which I'm still kind of iffy on if he's going to do or not, then this set simply does not work. But I think this set is really cool. And if he does bring Tauros, I think this set could absolutely win the game, whether it be early in the game, late in the game, whatever the case may be. I think this set does fantastic. We're 8 HP, 248 attack, 92 defense, and 160 speed Jolly. With this, we are able to outspeed a Meowskarada. We can live two defensive Iron Treads Earthquakes. That is no attack Iron Treads. And then we put the rest into attack. Like I said, this set is our win con barring no Tauros. If there's no Tauros, then plans obviously are gonna have to change a little bit because we're gonna have no way to proc the Adrenaline Orb and then our very cool set is not gonna be shown and I'll just have to talk about it post game interview with Joey. Our second Pokemon, and I hate showing that I have to bring this in this matchup. I actually feel like I have to bring this Pokemon in this matchup is going to be Gold Dingo. We are going to be Assault Vest, and this is just simply not to lose to the Espathra. We are Make It Rain, Shadow Ball, Psy Shock, and Focus Blast. Dual Stabs obviously does really well. Psy Shock in case he is a Calm Mind Espathra, and then Focus Blast to potentially hit an AV Iron Treads if that is something that he does bring. There wasn't really a last move in this slot that I particularly liked. I could have been like Nightshade to guarantee damage, I suppose. Uh, I could have been Flash Cannon just in case uh, we didn't want the drop with Make It Rain, but Really, I felt like there was never a better move here than Focus Blast just because of potential AV Iron Treads. We are 224 HP, 4 defense, 32 special attack, and 248 special defense with a calm nature. So this Pokemon is not only necessary, but very, very important because Espathra just spanks us. There is no way around it. 3 attack, Calm Mind Espathra demolishes us, and this Pokemon mitigates that just a little bit. We didn't have to run any speed in this matchup, thankfully, because I do not think he's going to be running something like max speed Shadow Ball Sylveon to beat us. I sure hope not, at least. Our EVs allow us to live two plus one Life Orb Espathra Shadow Balls after rocks. I did Life Orb because I'm not sure what item he could be. I think maybe Expert Bow makes sense. I think maybe he could even be Modest, maybe Twisted Spoon. Modest is not an item. I don't know why I said that. There's a lot of different options for Espathra here. He could even just be Boots. He could be Boots and he could be fine on that front. And then we have four defense to live a Meowskarada knockoff after rocks. And then we just went the rest into special attack. This Pokemon is just supremely important and we can't really afford switching it in on something like Sylveon just 
just in case I just pack in the shadow ball and he aggressively calls it. There might be a situation where I feel like I'm kind of forced to do that and I might have to at least one time just to gauge some damage on the Sylveon, but it's going to be very weird and put me in a very awkward situation because this Pokemon needs to be alive or we get swept by a spot through straight up. We have a very poor spot through matchup. Next up to the surprise of not one person watching this video, our next Pokemon is Slowbro. Slowbro is here specifically for the Palafin. It's actually one of the better checks to Palafin in the game. I would say Slowking arguably is a little bit better, but Slowbro is still a great check. I say Slowking is just a little bit better just because Palafin gets Grass Knot, which does tremendous damage to both of the slows. And obviously Slowking takes less from that while still being able to take two wave crashes. So Slowbro is here specifically for that Pokemon for the Palafin. We are Slack Off, Thunder Wave, Future Sight, and Foul Play with the Rocky Helmet. Foul play was an interesting slot. It is here specifically because I think he might have to be bulk up Palafin. And if he is, I don't really have another move to beat that consistently. I could have been Psychic. I could have been Grass Knot. But I liked Foul Play because Foul Play also does pretty good damage into something like the Iron Treads compared to Grass Knot, I guess. But I also really, really debated Body Press because Body Press helped me catch a potential Meowth Karata switching into Future Sight as well as the Iron Treads. So I might regret that. I might regret not going Body Press. We'll see. We can easily spread pairs with Thunder Wave. And the reason I don't like Foul Play is because Iron Tread sits on this Pokemon 100% of the time. And I know that. And I know that that's a problem with this specific Slowbro set. And maybe I will. And I probably am, am regretting right now that I'm not Body Press over Foul Play. You know what? I'll admit it, I was wrong. I should have been Body Press. But the only thing with Body Press is if he was bulk up, he could have beat us one on one. So I don't know. If, if we got enough pairs, he didn't. It, I'm not going to dread on that for too long. We have 248 HP. We are a bold nature, zero defense. We have 60 special attack and 200 special defense. And we are obviously the Rocky Helmet to catch potential flip turns as well as. You know, jet punches, drain punches, whatever the Palafin wants to do, as long as he's not punching glove. We can take two invested Palafin grass knots after rocks. We can take two banded wave crashes after rocks, and then we just put the rest into special attack. Again, this is another situation of not really needing speed EVs. I'm not really scared of Nako stack. Famous last words, but I'm not really scared of that Pokemon. And obviously, we don't even touch it anyway, so I would have to switch out on it regardless. But again, Slowbro is just here for the Palafin. It can also help with the Tauros Paldea Blaze if he does bring it. And that's another reason why I'm not super confident he's going to bring the Tauros because Slowbro is probably just simply one of the best checks in the game. So I'm not positive that it's going to come in this matchup because of that. But if it does, we have Slowbro if things get a little bit bad with the Chi and Pao. Next up, we are going to have what is going to be our guaranteed lead if we see Sylveon at all or if we see no Tauros is going to be Glamora. We're going to be a Corrosion Spiky Shield with Toxic set this week with Sludge Wave and Earth Power. We are Toxic Corrosion specifically to catch the Iron Treads switch in because Iron Treads is a pretty free switch into this Pokemon, especially if he is specially defensive or AV. It's a really easy switch into this Pokemon because it can rapid spin our any hazards away that we want to set. And then obviously pressure us out with an earthquake. So I like this set because we can toxic him and spiky shield potentially on whatever he wants to do, whether it be rapid spin or whether it be earthquake, we can spiky shield on that and get a little bit of extra damage if he does an earthquake or if he doesn't volt switch as well, I suppose. And we can kind of put that iron treads on a timer because iron treads is very difficult for my team to deal with. But this is also going to be a Meowth Karata check. This is one of the only Pokemon on my team that can take two Meowth Karata hits. So we had to bring it in some creative way. We're 240 HP. 152 defense bold 88 special attack 16 special defense and 12 speed this allows us to live two scarf meows karata flower tricks after rocks if they are adamant we have a little bit of speed for potential creeps and then we live two psychic from uninvested sylveon the rest into special attack and this is going to be the lead because if we lead anything else in the Meowth Karata, we're in a really bad spot. Obviously, look at the rest of our team. Uh, unless, unless, unless he doesn't bring the Sylveon, then we're going to lead Chi and Pao probably. But otherwise, we get put in a really tough spot if Meowth Karata is led. And Glamora can kind of mitigate that in some way and force him to not really want to stay in and break the sash, I assume. Our next Pokemon. You love him. I hate him. Quaquaval. Quaquaval has been nothing but disappointed this season, and I expect nothing short of that in this match. We are Scarf Quaquaval to outspeed everything on his team before an Aqua Step with U turn, Aqua Step, close combat, and rapid spin. I do expect potentially some sort of stack from Aims in, so I do like having the rapid spinner in some fashion, and Quaquaval was the only one that really fit. Aim doesn't have a great 
water resist really it's just palafin so being able to get aqua steps up early and often is going to be really really nice in this matchup we also have scarf u-turn for a potential meowth's karata if he is not scarf which is possible but bandit is probably more likely in this matchup and if we ever get one aqua step up we can outspeed a plus one espathra and potentially catch him off guard we are 8 hp 192 attack with an adamant nature 28 defense 92 special defense and 188 speed this allows us to live two non-boosted espathra lumen it crashes after rocks and it also gives us some good spadef for the rest of his team and then we can leave two adamant wave crashes from the palafin with the rest into attack adamant if things go south with chi and pow i do actually think that quaqua Ball is capable of winning in the in game should we get the necessary chip on palafin which i don't see with Slowbro why we wouldn't and then our last mon my most loved pokemon on this channel all time has almost racked up 5,000 views since I've uploaded the week one video, live Wo Chien reaction. That's right, Wo Chien is back, baby, and hopefully here to help us alleviate a little bit of pressure off Goldingo with the Espathra. We're a really weird set. We have Chapel Berry, obviously, for the Terra Blast on Espathra, on top of the close combat from Palafin. We are Stun Sport, Light Screen, Power Whip, and Leech Seed, and this set is funky that's the the nicest thing i can say about it is that this set is funky stun spore is super important we can stun spore so many different pokemon there's actually only one pokemon on his team that can take the stun spore and that's meow's karata which could potentially be a switch into this pokemon but he also has to fear the body press we can stun spore the iron treads the espathra we can stun spore palafin this puts us in such a good spot so long as we hit against those pokemon we are light screen because with the chapel berry we actually not really able to take two Espathra plus one Terra Blast. It's kind of a, a little bit of a roll depending on his set. So it's not exactly the most fun. Uh, if he's modest, it's a roll. If he's a boosting item, it's a roll. If he's neither of those things, it's not a roll. So I like having the light screen to mitigate how much damage the Espathra can do to my entire team because I feel like it's quite a lot of damage. We have Power Whip, which is able to two hit KO the Espathra always, as well as gives us some big damage on stuff like Palafin and Iron Treads. And then we have Leech Seed because we have no left leftovers and no form of recovery again this could have been body press but i really like the leech seed specifically specifically for the recovery we are more defensive this week with 248 hp 80 defense 172 special defense with a careful nature this allows us to live a palavin close combat into another close combat with the chapel berry and then we're just the rest in special defense to try to help mitigate the stupid espathra if he's not a defensive espathra power whip guaranteed to hit ko's all of the time and we should be in a pretty good spot with that. So that's going to be the team versus Joey Pokey game. Like I said, we're bringing a couple of fun stuff. We're bringing the fun Chi and Pow. Try to see if we can get a potential sweep with that. But I do think that this team, while it is fun and it's interesting, I think it can also win. And I think that hopefully we give Joey his third loss here. Be sure to check Joey out in the top right hand corner if you have not already. I'm sure you have, but if you haven't for whatever reason and you're watching me, I promise he is one of the best Pokemon content creators out there and you should go give him a look. But I think that's it for me here, guys. I don't have a lot else to say. Like I said, if you are here from Joey, I very much appreciate it. It means the world to me. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to stay and you want to be notified every time I upload some PPR content. And thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. Signing off.